Don't laugh at me, but maybe we could be each other's soulmates. We know the girls are each other's soulmates, but what about those guys they have fun with? <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 memorable Sex in the City boyfriends. You ever gonna mention anything about the cookie? You know what? Yes, I was. If you give me a minute. For this list, we're talking about the men in the franchise who left the biggest impressions, not necessarily the ones who were the best boyfriends. Are you, uh, are you okay? Do I need to make a tourniquet out of a hot dog bun and a twig? We're only looking at guys that the girls dated for more than one episode of the show. This means that guys like Jeremy, Carrie's charming but mentally unstable high school sweetheart, don't make the cut. I'm sort of in a, uh... mental institution. We're also excluding guys and storylines that only appeared in the movies. You are a natural. Number 10, Jack Berger. I didn't figure you for a motorcycle guy. Turns out, I'm not. I bought it as a reaction to my breakup. When Carrie starts dating Berger, we finally get to see her with an intellectual equal. Like Carrie, Berger is a writer. He's also funny and sarcastic to boot. Well, I should get going. Uh, it's gonna take me six hours to drive the two miles home, so. Oh. Despite their initial problems in the bedroom and an argument here and there, Berger seems like the nice guy that Carrie's been waiting for. Who could resist their Hollywood kiss bit and witty banter? But as Carrie and Berger are two sensitive characters with a lot of neuroses between them, things were bound to fail. You can't just pull that line on me and walk away. Well, this time it's true. Their relationship starts to crumble when Berger becomes jealous of Carrie's success as a writer. Sadly, Berger will ultimately be remembered as the guy who broke up with Carrie on a post-it. Read it and weep, my friends. I'm sorry I can't, don't hate me. Number nine, Robert Leeds. Mm. <clears throat> While Miranda's trying to get over Steve, she develops a steamy relationship with sexy and successful doctor to the New York Knicks, Robert Leeds. What? Uh, one of my guys busted his knee. Have to go to the hospital. Oh! What a 6 8 pro basketball star is doing on a skateboard. The two meet when Robert applies to live in Miranda's building. And Miranda, who's on the co op board, becomes instantly infatuated with him. And suddenly, Miranda wasn't so bored in her board meeting. Hi. These two have serious chemistry, and Robert seems perfect. He's even great with Brady. But when Robert declares his love for Miranda in a unique way, Miranda is unable to reciprocate. Things get a little awkward after she and Robert part ways, which causes Miranda to seriously regret dating a neighbor. Robert, ooh, yes, ooh, Robert, oh God, Robert, ooh, no man has ever been in this deep. Number eight, Richard Wright. Oops, I dropped my portfolio. As someone who's used to getting exactly what she wants, Samantha is thrown when she starts dating a man who likes to call the shots. Dance with me. What did I say? I'm your boss. It's an order. When high-powered hotel tycoon Richard Wright comes onto the scene, it seems like Samantha has finally met her match. Richard is wealthy, powerful, confident, and, in the beginning at least, treats Samantha like a queen. Though she's initially reluctant to accept his romantic overtures, in the end, it's Sam who wants their relationship to become monogamous. Samantha, a stranger to love, didn't do it very well. Oh, and I heard the weather this morning, but they didn't say anything about a shitstorm. But when it becomes clear that Richard's never gonna let go of his philandering ways, Samantha chooses to be alone rather than stay with a guy who's broken her heart. Now your heart's broken too. Number seven, Alexander Petrovsky. Okay, that's him again. Oh my God, that's Alexander Petrovsky, the artist. All right, the Russian has some redeeming qualities. He's sophisticated. He uses his connections to surprise Carrie with an amazing Oscar de la Renta dress. He whisks her off to Paris and um, there's definitely other good stuff, right? Sadly, the more memorable scenes with this character are the bad ones killing a mouse with a frying pan, <laughs> leaving Carrie alone when she's ditched a party with her fans for him. See, you're doing it again. And of course, the infamous slap. Carrie. He doesn't even get it when Carrie loses her Carrie necklace. 
That's some serious symbolism right there. Fans found themselves screaming at their televisions, pleading with Carrie to go home to New York during season six. And promise not to let go all night, huh? Thankfully, Mr. Big has a plan in the works to finally sweep Carrie off her feet. It took me a really long time to get here. But I'm here. Number six, Trey McDougal. Do you play tennis? Mm hmm I like her. Join the club. <laughs> Despite a romantic fairy tale beginning, this relationship just can't live up to Charlotte's high expectations. I'm Trey. Charlotte. Charlotte had been so desperate to get married that she clearly couldn't see the flaws in her rapidly progressing courtship with the blue-blooded cardiologist Trey McDougal. Faster than you can say Manolo Blahnik, Charlotte and Trey are walking down the aisle in what seems like anybody's dream wedding, even though their pre-wedding tryst didn't exactly go as planned. Trey can't get it up. What? We slept together last night and he couldn't get it up. Deep down, Trey isn't a bad guy, but any fan will tell you that he just wasn't the guy for our eternal optimist, Charlotte. However, Trey proves just how classy he can be when he steps up and is there for Charlotte, even after they've decided to separate. You don't have no. to. This is important to you. I at least want to do this. Number five, Harry Goldenblatt. Sorry to bust in, there's a bagel over here with my name on it. If Trey was the type of man Charlotte had always imagined herself ending up with, then Harry is the exact opposite. Oh. oh. The, who the hell ordered blueberry bagels? Bald, brash, and, well, Harry. Harry is not who perfect Park Avenue Charlotte ever thought she'd fall for. I think you are the sexiest woman I ever met. <laughs> Harry, don't be ridiculous, I'm wearing my glasses. It makes me crazy when you say my name. But fall for him, she does even going so far as to convert to Judaism because Harry can't marry someone who isn't Jewish. I gave up Christ for you and you can't give up the Mets? It's gonna be a long life if you keep that up. I gave up Christ for you, take out the trash. Charlotte becomes impatient when their relationship isn't progressing as quickly as she'd like and inadvertently reveals that she thinks she's out of Harry's league. Do you know what people out there think when they see us together, do you? Yeah, I know what people are thinking. I just didn't think you were one of them. This fight causes the two to break up, but it's only a matter of time before they reunite in one of the most heartwarming moments of the series. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. Number four, Jerry Smith Jared. Hello. I was here the other night. Well, that's what happens. You come once and you just keep coming over and over. <laughs> You're so big. We thought Sam would never settle down. But when she starts dating aspiring actor slash waiter and soon to be model Jerry Jared, we prayed she'd never let him go. Can I get you a scotch? No thanks man, I'm in AA. Aside from being insanely handsome, which is what draws Samantha to him in the first place, the now known as Smith Jared ends up being a more kind and caring partner than anyone could have imagined. He's always there for her, even when she doesn't realize she needs him. Even in the dark, Smith could still see Samantha. And for the very first time, she saw him. After she's diagnosed with breast cancer and has to start undergoing chemotherapy, Smith proves that he's far more than just a boy toy for Samantha. And when I'm done cue balling here, I'm moving right over to you. That night, Smith gave Samantha the very best head of her life. Number three, Steve Brady. Please. Please what? I'll have another glass of wine, please. Um, are you allowed to talk to me like that? Yeah, I think I am. Steve and Miranda have their fair share of problems over the years, from incompatible incomes to opposing sleep schedules. I have spinning, and then I get my dry cleaning, and I have my nails done, and I do my grocery shopping for the week. Okay? Okay, that's sounding very free to me. But in the end, they're always there for one another. In fact, they're one of the only Sex in the City couples that you can really call best friends. Miranda. You're the one. Miranda is put off dating nice guys after her brief relationship with the clingy skipper. But Steve challenges Miranda's independent nature, convincing her that it's worth it to let other people in sometimes. It may take a cancer diagnosis and an unintentional pregnancy to finally get these two together. But for Steve and Miranda, it's well worth the wait. I'm, I'm going to take care of the baby and support it. And you can visit whenever you want, but it's not going to be your problem. Number two, 
Aiden Shaw. His name was Aiden Shaw. He was warm, masculine, and classic American. Since Carrie spent so much of the series focusing her attention on the elusive and seemingly unattainable Mr. Big, the audience breathed a collective sigh of relief when she began her relationship with the loving and dependable Aiden Shaw. You know my dog, he's obsessed with you. He uh, kept me up talking all night. Her leg, man, her leg. Woo! <laughs> This guy is such a great boyfriend that they actually have a fight about the fact that they never fight. Shut up! Shut up! Yes! Shut up! But while in most of the Sex and the City relationships it's the guys who end up being the problem, this time it's undoubtedly Carrie who ruins this partnership by having a secret affair with none other than Big himself. You slept with that guy when we were going out? Once? Oh, more than once. We may never be able to forgive her for that one, even though Aiden eventually does, at least enough so they can get back together, albeit not permanently. Let's just do it. Let's get in the cab. Airport, Vegas. Huh? <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I can't stop thinking about you. So I'll pick you up at seven. I had a wonderful time. Can I see you again? I love that. Well, <laughs> back at you. And here is one special honorable mention. Because even though she may not be a boyfriend, she was definitely a memorable partner for Samantha. Number one, Mr. Big. Number one, there you go. he's very handsome. Number two, he's not wearing a wedding ring. Without a doubt, our number one spot has to go to the dashing and enigmatic Mr. Big. Have you ever been in love? Absolutely. Throughout six seasons, Carrie just can't seem to forget about him. Much of Big's appeal lies in the fact that so many things about him are a mystery. If you think I have the slightest chance, I'll be on the next plane to Paris, I'll roam the streets until I find her, I'll do anything. What exactly does he do for a living? How does he always seem to run into Carrie at exactly the wrong moment? And most importantly, is he really capable of loving her? How many women are you dating? In the tri-state area. Whether you love him or hate him, Big ultimately gets the girl's approval and gives Carrie the happily ever after she's been looking for, ending the series by sweeping her off her feet in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> do you agree with our list? I must tell you, all this canoodling and bed hopping is tacky and immature. Who do you think is the most memorable Sex in the City boyfriend? How does Aiden feel about me? Ah, jeez, no. I mean, you're not gonna try to get back together with him again, are you? For more sexy top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. And it just gets harder as we get older because we're not dating wildly inappropriate people anymore. You know, there's, there's no, uh, whew, glad that's over. Right. Right.